As always, I will place the link in the description down below if you'd like to look at the system further or acquire one for yourself. And this backup system uses a fairly large 7 inch high resolution screen. Now the screen has a built in hood right here which should help to cut the glare from the sun on any other bright lights during the day. Now the screen is on a pivot mount, so once this is installed on the vehicle, it can be tilted not only up or down, but we can move it left to right so we can get a good view of the screen. And once we find a spot that we like, we can further turn this knob to lock the position of the screen in place. Now the screen can be placed directly onto the dash or into a surface of the vehicle using the double sided tape that they have included. I simply peel this, stick this to the base, then peel this again, find a spot in the vehicle and then attach it on there. And in the back of the screen we have the spot for the antenna. Now they have included this little stubby antenna which screws onto here. Now this system has a range of up to 40 feet. So if your vehicle is under 40 feet this should be more than enough. However, if you need additional range, they do offer an extended antenna that can be installed instead of the stubby one. I'll put a link in the description to the extender if needed. And here's what the backup camera looks like. Now the entire body of the camera and the mounting bracket is made out of metal, so this feels very very heavy duty. There is a built in hood right here which should help to cut any glare for any bright light sources. Also we can see that the camera lens itself is protected by glass and this camera has been equipped with two high power infrared LEDs. Now those infrared LEDs will enable true night vision which means we're going to be able to back up at night in full darkness. The camera also has provisions for tilt. We can point the camera down, we can point the camera up and we will also have the ability to adjust the height. We can bring the camera up higher or lower to give us a good view and once we find a position that we like we can lock both the height and the tilt into place. Now as far as mounting the camera they have provided these two screws that are self tapping so there is not really needed this screw should be able to tap into the surface and we can lock the base in that way. And as I mentioned earlier the camera itself is protected by glass but this is not any kind of regular glass this has been specially treated so it's what we call a hydrophobic glass. Now what does that mean? Well that means that it should repel water and I'm curious to do this test I have not tried it so I'm not sure exactly what results to expect but let's test it out this is plain water and I'm gonna put a drop in here and see what it does okay <laughs> very cool so as you saw the water drop runs directly away from the glass almost like if we had some kind of wax on here now this is advantageous because if there's any water that gets splashed on this glass such as if it's raining it's gonna slide off and it's gonna still provide us with a clear view of the rear of the car now just for giggles I do have a standard piece of glass here and we'll test the same thing about a 45 degree angle now the water should run but you'll notice the difference that it'll do this Notice how it's smeared and how it really had a hard time getting down to the bottom. And that is the difference between a hydrophobic glass surface and a regular untreated surface. And moving towards the back, here is the cable that will power the camera. And we can see that the wires have been labeled, so we know that the red one is gonna go to power and the black one is gonna go to ground. Now, if you're curious how to tap into the reverse lights of your car to power a camera like this, I have created a separate video for that. I'll put a link in the description if you wanna see how that is done. And still in the subject of providing power to this camera, there's probably gonna be a location where we're gonna be able to feed this cable and not have to drill any holes. However, if there is a need to drill a hole to route this cable, they have included this little hole saw that would allow a hole big enough for this cable to pass through and there is a grommet in here to make sure that that hole is, so, is somewhat sealed so there's not going to be any water or moisture going through it. Now in the back of the camera we also have the spot for the antenna and this is what the antenna looks like and it's simply going to screw on here. Once it's screwed the antenna can be pointed up, down, left to right to clear any potential obstacles that are nearby our camera. And to power up the front display they have included the cigarette lighter adapter plug with a fairly long cable which is approximately 11 and 12 feet in length so more than enough length for us to be able to reach the screen and finally they have provided a simple instruction manual that covers the contents of the kit the installation process and the basic operations for this camera but now let's move over to the car so i can show you the rest of these features and here's the autovox w10 wireless backup system now i'm going to turn the car on so we can see how fast it takes to turn on 
and connect to the rear camera. And here it is. Now, as you can see, we are shown the rear view and we are presented with reverse guidelines. Now, these reverse guidelines are gonna come in handy as we back up because this is gonna give us a rough idea of where we're at in relation to the curve. So let's do a little bit of backing up and let's see how that looks. Now, this camera has a 720p resolution, which is considered high definition, and it runs at 25 frames per second. Yeah, there we go. This makes it a lot easier to back up, especially since this car is not equipped with a backup camera. And here's the way we can use those guidelines. As you can see, we're getting close to this post right here. If this was a car, we would know, okay, green, we are probably okay to back up a little bit more. Yellow, now we're getting very close to the rear car. Red, we will probably not want to back up any further. I'm gonna move back to the front again. And you can see also that it is quite windy out there and we still have a good signal. Mind you, this is being tested on a car. This system is primarily designed to be used in RVs and larger vehicles. Now I placed it here on my dash, but on a larger vehicle, you could place it off to the side so it does not get in the way of your view. But now let me show you the menu options. And I'm gonna hit the menu right here. And the first one is pair. Now this system automatically came pair, so I didn't have to do anything but install the camera and it automatically connected to the front. However, I could pair an additional second camera by going into this menu and I could technically run a rear and front camera and if I were to have a second camera installed I can change the view by hitting the channel button so this will look for channel number two obviously I only have one camera so there is no channel number two What's pretty interesting is that we can have a split view. So if we have two cameras, we could potentially see the, the back of the car and we can see the front of the car. So it's convenient to be able to display both of them at the same time. But we'll return to the front menu and we'll go back to menu. We can also adjust the brightness and contrast if we wanted this to be brighter for some reason uh, or darker at night if it was bothering us. And we can also adjust the image control. Now, what is the image control? Well, there are two options. The first one will be to mirror the image. And if we mirror the images, what it was on the left will now be on the right and what was on the right will be on the left. Now, this is convenient if you are mounting the camera in the front, you will want to flip the image. And same thing, if you were mounting the front camera in the back, you may want to unflip the image. So that is a good option. But also you can change the view to be upside down. Now, why would you want the view to be upside down? Well, if the camera had been installed upside down, you can correct for that image so it will display correctly side up. So it is convenient that they give us two options because that gives us the ability to place the camera in many places in our vehicle and still be able to see it correctly on the display. Next option is gonna be guidelines. If for some reason we did not want it to have the guidelines come on, we can turn off the reverse guidelines. But now that we saw how the system performs, let's perform the range test. The system is rated at 40 feet. So I'm gonna test the performance of the wireless transmission. So this is what our test setup looks like. The camera is there on top of my hood and I have the receiver, which is the screen that we've been looking at in the car. So I'm gonna drive away from the blue car and we're gonna see how far the signal goes. So I'm gonna begin to drive away from the backup camera itself. So this is us and we're gonna see how far it can transmit. Now there is a possibility we'll see either a drop of frame rate or we might see pixelation or we might see the signal drop altogether as we get closer to 40 feet. <laughs> we have already passed 40 feet. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so that is me, and we are that far from the camera and we are still connected. Okay, so now we are definitely way, way, way more than what this is rated. Now remember that this is also gonna be affected by sometimes the, the size of the vehicle that can actually create a restriction on itself. We still have a good signal. This is a clear shot, but if the vehicle was very large, that's why they rated it at 40 feet, because it wants to take into account the potential that a vehicle would reduce the distance of the transmission. However, you do have, and at this point, yeah, this is definitely way, way more than I'm probably about two blocks now, so any further than this will probably make no sense for me to continue testing. But as I mentioned earlier, you could get an extender antenna if you're having problems when you don't have a direct line of sight and you wanna have a stable signal. This, with just a shorty antenna, 
it's pretty stable. But just for giggles, let's see how far we can actually go before we lose complete signal. <laughs> yeah, I can barely see myself. Oh, here we go, signal dropped. So I am probably now about two and a half, maybe three blocks away from the car and we're starting to see the signal drop and the signal drop completely. And now we are driving back towards the camera and we have picked up the signal again. And there we are, that little silver point coming towards the camera. <laughs> and that's us right here. <laughs> Very cool. And that's the advantage of using a wireless digital signal. This uses a 2.4 gigahertz band, which is why it's quite strong. And here's the AutoVox W10 system at night. Now, one of the first things we notice is that the camera automatically switched to night vision mode. So that's why things look like they're black and white, because we are now on infrared lights. Remember, there are two lights that are illuminating the back of the car, and there's some light being provided by the back of tail lights of my car. Now, I'm gonna start to move in reverse so we can see that video in action. See, we still have the reverse guidelines that we can use to make sure that we do not hit the curve. And we can see some detail in here. We can see the fire hydrant. We can see this post we're coming to. We can see a curve. If this was a car and I wanted to make sure I did not hit that, let's imagine that post is a car, I can stop right here and I'm within the green lines. So there's good visibility at night, especially for being very a dark street, the one I happen to live in. <laughs> And that was the AutoBox W10 digital wireless backup camera system. As you saw, it has pretty good performance, not only in terms of video quality, but also in terms of range. We definitely exceeded the 40 feet that this is rated at, and we still had a good signal. I do like that they offered the extended antenna for those who wanna have that additional range that they might desire. But I think the two main things that I really like about the system is the hydrophobic glass, which I've never seen before, where the glass repels water like I showed you earlier and that the screen is massive seven inches which for me I have to wear glasses to see very well <laughs> so it helps to have a larger screen so I can see the image clearly without having to strain my eyes so remember I placed the link in the description down below if you like to look at the system further or acquire one for yourself and if you have any questions regarding the installation or this system please put that in the comments down below if you found any part of this video helpful please hit the thumbs up button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more cool gadgets coming up for your car thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.